Hey guys, welcome to the Catholic Influencers Podcast extended interview for season 12, episode one. My name is Augie Angersano, and this season I've had the opportunity to interview people from around the world, learn their stories, and allow them to share their thoughts on the gospel. So the gospel for this week is John 641 For a more thorough breakdown, make sure you check out that episode with Alyssa, Justine, and Father Rob. It's available on all platforms now. This week, I got to speak with Karen Doyle. She's the founder of The Genius Project and an amazing woman of God. So let's get into it and help me welcome our guest for this week, Karen. Karen, I have heard so much about you from our team, and I'm excited to have a conversation with you today. Thank you for jumping on the podcast oh, and sharing with us. It's a pleasure. It's such a joy to be here and, and so grateful for your ministry and all the work that you do serving the church and people. Now, what I want to do is I want to jump straight into your testimony. I want to hear who Jesus was to you while you were growing up. What did he bring you out of? And I also want to hear who is he today? in your everyday life with everything you got going on? Wow, it's a good question. <laughs> he, he is the, uh, the most important part of my life. And I think growing up, I had my first profound encounter of God would have been, I think I was 13 and a half, actually. So I um, had scoliosis, which is curvature of the spine at a young age, and it progressed quite badly. And my dad took me to see Sister Bridge McKenna. She was a, a, a nun who had a healing ministry. And we went to see her. And my first encounter really of Jesus being real was in a mass um, where the priest was sort of talking and then Sister was talking about healing. Now, my dad had really hoped that I would receive a healing and wouldn't have to go through this major surgery at 13. And the Lord didn't give me that healing. But what he did was he came into my heart in a very special way. And fast forward another month or two when I actually did have the surgery, I remember being really frightened the night before the surgery. And I opened my confirmation devotional and it landed on Proverbs 3, 5, 6, which is trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and everything you do acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. And so that really has been a signature scripture over my life for many years. And I think at that young age, I realized that sometimes the Lord doesn't actually answer our prayers in the way that we want but he's always good and he's always faithful. So that was uh, that was a truth that really hit home at a young age. And then I think I gave my life to the Lord officially, like I always grew up in a Catholic home, but when I was in grade 10 and had a really beautiful experience and encounter of Christ's love for me. And I think Jesus has always been a friend. He's always been someone who I feel is with me through the highs and the lows of life. Um, and who is he for me now is just, he is everything. So on my whole day, I feel like we have been through many challenges over the last five years, and I won't go into all of them on the podcast, but I, I think that lesson that I learned at 13 is still with me, is that he's always good, he's always faithful, and he is the one that I cling to because I often feel that life around us is so chaotic. I, I think we're living in a really chaotic world at the moment, um, coming out of COVID and all of those things, but that he's always good and faithful is a truth that we must cling to in the middle of the storm. So that's that's who he is for me, I guess, in my life at the moment. And um, prayer and, you know, those disciplines of going to Mass, praying the Rosary, Adoration, the sacraments are really central to my life. And I think they are my pillars that I, I build everything on. You're really well known in Australia for your work on the Genius Project. I would love to hear a little bit of the backstory of how did this come about? And I'd also like to know where does this heart for young Catholic women come from? Yeah, sure. It's a, I, yeah, it's something that I'm very passionate about. There's lots of things that I do in my life, but I think my great passion is really to serve Catholic women and to support them. And I, if I could sum up what the Genius Project is, it's an initiative for Catholic women designed to resource and support them towards growth. Because if we're not growing in life, we're dying. And, and we are called in this life to be on pilgrimage. Our whole 
life is a pilgrimage towards heaven. And so having this spirit of receptivity to growth is really important. So Genius Project is is an initiative that is designed to support women. And it came out of my work serving women. Many years ago, we set up Sisterhood, a national Catholic women's movement here in Australia. And we run a big Catholic women's conference every second year. And I think what I saw there was women lacking formation in what it means to be a Catholic woman. So how just that sort of human formation, like we get a lot of spiritual formation, but the human formation, the very practical skills that we need to live lives of wholeness in Christ. Um, So that sort of fed into it. But I did have one particular experience where I was actually my husband was speaking in the United States and I was with a group of women and they were very negative about the church and and a lot of the issues in the church and they were complaining constantly and I walked away from that thinking how sad I, I actually revisited them a couple of years later and they were still complaining having the same conversation and it was that experience that I thought wow instead of complaining and focusing on our lack on what women perceive they don't have, let's put all of our energy into, I guess, maximizing our gifts and strengths that the Lord has given us and really understanding how we have been uniquely wired and created in God's image and likeness. And then how are we being able, how are we being asked to serve and and make use of our gifts in service and contribution to the church? So I think that's what really inspired me was that experience of People really focusing on what they thought they didn't have rather than realizing what they've actually been given. And all of us, men and women, have been given incredible gifts by God. We have a unique contribution and role to play in in this great mission of the church. And so I think when we focus on what we don't have, when we focus on comparing ourselves to others, then we actually aren't living the fullness of who God's created us to be. So that's what inspired me. And then we set up the Genius Podcast, which is a podcast for Catholic women, just really trying to support them in their life in all areas. So, yeah. Your journey has been filled with um, a lot of trials and tribulations. How was that suffering of going through the surgery? And I heard that you struggled to have a child with you and your husband for a long time. And how has that experience shaped your faith? Well, I think I explained how that the one of surgery really shaped my faith. Um, And I think looking for where God is at work and what he is actually doing, because when I was 13, my um, my spine curved so badly that I ended up having like a 76 degree curve. So I had quite a lot of deformity on my back and, and a great deal of pain. And my dad tracked down miraculously a surgeon who was um, trialing a new procedure here in Australia back in 1988. And uh, so I was his pinup girl and he was able to get my curve down to 22. So even though I went through the surgery, there was a huge miracle and blessing in that and then fast forward you know all those years later we got married and that first year we sort of waited and then we started trying for a family and that didn't happen for us for the first six years and I think that experience was an experience of a profound lack of hope and I think when we lose hope in life, we can fall into despondency and despair. And it's a very isolating, not a very nice place to be in. And I remember having spoken with Jonathan with the Sisters of Life in New Zealand at a conference and and being in New Zealand, that whole experience was just towards the end of those six years. And the heaviness and weight of the grief of of sort of not wanting to hope anymore because I didn't want to be disappointed um, became too much for me. And I remember going to Adoration when we came back to Australia, came back home, and remember sitting in front of the Blessed Sacrament just with this realisation that the Lord may not grant my heart's desire to become a mother. And that was quite confronting because I was like, how can you, how could you say no to this request? Like I'm faithful and I'm praying and But in that moment, I think he was inviting me to place my trust in him regardless of whether he granted my heart's desire. And I remember very clearly where I was sitting, that moment of surrender, claiming that truth once again, that he's always good, he's always faithful, regardless of my circumstances. And 
Ironically, in that moment, I was actually pregnant, but didn't realize. So, oh, no yeah, way. It was wow. amazing. How beautiful. And how he met you in that moment of desolation. Like, that's where God met yeah, you. Yeah, it was, it was such desolation. But it was quite, um, quite an incredible moment just in my faith journey where I think I stepped from having an immature faith to a mature faith. Um, and that was a really special moment. And and then, you know, God was so good to us. He blessed us with three kids in three years. So we said to the sisters, please stop praying <laughs> just for a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah but done. praise God, you know, we have three teenagers now and um, and that's, yep. that comes with its own uh, journey, right? So it's a blessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'll know soon enough. Love to hear your thoughts on the gospel. If you've had a chance to read over it, to read through it before you jumped on the podcast with us. What insights, what key takeaways would you like to share with us this week? Well, look, I did read it and two things that jumped out at me, and I often like to give people anchors when I speak so that they remember these words as anchors. And for me, they are a challenge and a reminder. So the challenge is all around complaining, <laughs> which I, I interestingly uh, sort of picked up on a few of those themes earlier when I talked about the Genius Project. But this theme of complaining, yeah. and I think it's something that can become a really negative habit in our life if we're not careful. And complaining is different to just acknowledging a difficult situation and, and how we're feeling as we're navigating a difficult season in life. But we have to guard against that spirit of complaint and a habit of complaint. And um, I love this quote from St. Bernadette. She said, I must die to myself continually and accept the trials of life without complaining. And interestingly, one other person that I love is St. Benedict. In his rule of life to his monks, he said, do not grumble. <laughs> so he was really clear about this discipline, and I think it is a discipline. And I love the reminder that Jesus gives in this gospel of stop complaining, stop complaining. Look up, yeah. look out, like elevate your gaze to heaven and, and look at me rather than the circumstances. So that was one thing. And the other one was just this reminder, the reminder to really trust in God, that he is the bread of life, that, that, you know, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. And that is where we draw all of our strength um, for whatever challenges we have to face in life. And I love in the gospel how Jesus is just inviting, he's presenting these truths very gently. Um, and I think we have to remember that the church and Christ never imposes on us, but proposes. It's this gentle invitation. And he gives us this beautiful intellect and will in the way he's created us with the ability to choose. So we actually have a choice when we're faced in different seasons of life, to either complain or not complain, to trust or not to trust. And we get to co-create our life with the Lord through the power of our individual choices. So I, I really do love this gospel just around this idea of complaint and, and developing a spirit of gratitude. Um, one thing that stood out for me, and I guess it's because I do a lot of work coaching women, and so this idea of the discipline of renewing our thoughts and taking our thoughts captive and making them obedient to Christ. So, yeah, it was a beautiful gospel. I I'm actually looking forward to Mass this week where I can say to my kids, did you listen to the gospel? <laughs> so you have a massive background in Catholic education and theology. What would you say are the key battles that people in Catholic education and in ministry are facing today in this social climate? That's a really good question and, and one that my husband and I are just in the thick of at the moment. So we have an overarching company, Choices Media, that um, deals a lot with sexuality, relationships, consent, education with teachers, parents, students. So we are right in the middle of this where we are training teachers. My husband does a lot of Catholic teacher formation and we do resources for schools. Now, we set up our company 20 years ago. We felt called to resign our full-time paid work. Looking back, I think that is the naivety of youth. <laughs> but we took that step of faith and I feel that at the moment we are facing a unique moment in history where there is a real redefining of what it means to be human. And I think Catholic educators play a critical role in being leaders um, and stewarding young people who are under their care towards a vision for human sexuality that is life-affirming, life-giving, and that just affirms their dignity 
because I think we're up against so many challenges in our culture, whether it's technology and different ideologies that are at play politically and educationally. And teachers play a really important role, but in order for teachers to play that role, they need to know what we have to offer. And the Catholic Church has such rich and beautiful teaching um, that sometimes isn't communicated in a way that really invites young people to consider the deepest desires of their heart and leads them towards human flourishing. So I think we are facing unprecedented challenges But at the same time, I think we are given a beautiful opportunity that we perhaps haven't had over the last 20 years to really step into this space, all Catholics actually, with the truth, beauty and goodness of what it means to be human. So, And great speaking with you, Karen. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for jumping on the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Beautiful. Thank you so much and God bless you. All right. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And for an extended explanation of the gospel, check out this week's Catholic Influencers podcast episode on all platforms. You can find the links to all of our socials at catholicinfluencerspodcast.com. Stay tuned for next week. God bless.